we needed a house that could accommodate my sister upstairs and ourselves downstairs and basically this was the only house that fulfilled that criteria and when we came we found we had a huge garden after we'd taken down 22 conifer trees and cut back all the weeds and whatever and um, this is how we came to be here really it wasn't choosing the house for the garden but the house being suitable for us and then the garden came with it you see wildlife that you would not necessarily well you don't see in everyday life unless you have a nature type garden or you go to a nature reserve nature reserve means that you can um, see all sorts of interesting people who are like-minded as regards nature and get chatting <laughs> I like to do a lot of chatting well my name is Adrian I've lived in Felixstowe for quite a while now um, the main feature of my childhood was spent in the wildlife of Felixstowe along Golfer Road in the Grove and uh, some viewers might remember the the Dooley Fort so my acquaintance with wildlife and conservation started here in Felixstowe. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and your knees dirty and try and sort out the weeds from the flowers. We had a monk jack deer who um, proceeded to eat my veggies. That wasn't such fun. And then um, we had Mr Fox who decided that the feral pigeons were quite good for breakfast um, and he got trapped in a trap that we had for the feral pigeons. In Felixstowe I really want us to get a community nature reserve the size of a football pitch and what that means getting uh, 1,666 local people to each allocate at least three square yards because 1666 multiplied by 3 gets to 5,000 square yards. That's the size of a football pitch. So that, that's an area, the equivalent in size to a football pitch that uh, we'll have here. But not just in Felixstowe, because I want to plant seeds for this community nature reserve model right across the country. Um, and already we've started um, in Leicestershire and uh, elsewhere. And then we've also had um, inquiries from Florida. Uh, South Africa, Australia um, and, and elsewhere as well so let's tell the world about yeah. this. Well because I'm so busy with other people's gardens I have to, now I've got it established I suppose I spent two hours a night during the summer, maybe three. Mr Fox decided he was going to have one for breakfast so he went into this trap that we'd got for them and um, got caught and my husband had to shake him out and off he ran but I think they come from a little woodland down the back of the um, estate. I mean, the thing was, we didn't intend it necessarily to be a wildlife garden, but it's become that. Um, well, nature's with, taken over. Yeah. They, they've seen the opportunity to get in there and get in. That's right. And we've seen the opportunity to find them and get them out. <laughs> <laughs> then they come back. They think they like it here, you know what they I mean? They do. Like yeah. you and I, we like it here. Yeah. Because you never know what you're going to see in the morning. And of course walking you across can your garden. do it in any kind of garden. I mean, where we lived before, we had a really small garden, but it had wildlife in it and hedgehogs and frogs and all sorts yeah and that was even without a pond oh yeah now we've got a <laughs> pond what have we got we've got the birds all fishing in the pond for the newts and the tadpoles haven't we uh, the and heron. the frogs of course oh and the heron came didn't it oh yeah we had the heron there mm. but he was disappointed because there wasn't any fish for him no but he liked the newts oh, of course he did yeah. tried to get them out and i had to shoo him off yeah leave my newts alone so we've had lots of wildlife in the garden one way and another. Of course, yeah. You, I mean, you get wildlife without even knowing it, don't you? Yeah. yeah exactly. I'm, I'm pleased there is, really. Sometimes we just see the droppings to know that they've been. 
Sometimes <laughs> it's more of a wildlife programme in our garden than it is on the television, isn't it? Yeah. Strange, really. Because you're quite wild, really. <laughs> oh, that's very nice of you to say so. But you, you have semi-tamed me, haven't you? Sort of. You've cut me hair, <laughs> shaved me beard off, <laughs> made me wear trousers. Well, not today. Go to skate. Yeah. But no, I think I think everyone should have a bit of wildlife in their garden and appreciate it, really? along with plants and everything else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, I do. Window boxes are good if you've got the right plants in. Well, if you, if you haven't got no other, if you're living rocks. in a flat, window boxes, yeah. Yeah. I mean, trouble is, we had a window box to start and it's grown into a big garden. It's amazing, isn't it, really? Mm. Um, well, the lady around the corner that opened her garden with us in, um, in June, she, or well, May rather, in May, she's got a very um, structured garden but it's good for wildlife and she's got an open gateway to the cemetery so the wildlife can come and go. Mm. It's glad that it's only the wildlife that comes from the cemetery and not the dead life isn't it? Because that would <laughs> be very upsetting. Um, but no, no, you know, it was nice to have a board when we opened up the other, yeah, the other week. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I like meeting people, I like them coming around and trying to find the weeds. <laughs> Which are not weeds, they're just flowers in the wrong place, as we know. And the wildlife, yes. yes. We get you are children who like looking at the frogs and the tadpoles, don't we? Ah, uh, yes, they do. Then they like to find out what's the other side of the door, don't they? Yeah. Because they think there could be even more wildlife around there. And there probably is, it's next door neighbours. <laughs> they're, pretty, they're pretty wild. But, uh, oh, oh, all in all, we've got the wildlife under control, haven't we? Well, we've got the wildlife oh, garden. Oh, they've got us under control, I'm not and sure who's who. We've got the wildlife garden and we've got the lovely flowers and plants to go with it. Yeah, always see the telltale signs in the morning of the where the hedgehogs have been leaving their, mm. their mark. Or the foxes. Or the foxes. Or the monk jack deer. Or the monk jack deer, yeah. And then we see well, Mr. Of course, the birds. Then we see Mrs. Sparrowhawk. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Sparrowhawk. I think it was Mrs. Right. The way she was bossing everybody around. I'm definitely a Mrs. Sparrowhawk. That was, <laughs> yeah, you could tell that, couldn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Get up in the morning, see a big pile of feathers where Mrs. Sparrowhawk has got her lunch yeah. or breakfast, whichever she wants to do with it. Yeah. No, no. I missed it when those ducks stopped coming, didn't you? I did. Mm, Mr. and Mrs. Duck. I wish they'd brought their, had their babies here. What, in our pond? Mm, yeah, that would be right. Mm. Mind you, it was quite funny really because most of the time you looked at it, all you could see was the bottom of them, their heads on the bottom of the pond, weren't they? You couldn't yeah. tell who was who, really. <laughs> I mean, one bum's the same as another, really, when you're a duck, I suppose. 